my first impressions were that uh, Copenhagen is a beautiful city. It's very clean and well organized. Um, um, the conference itself is, is absolutely massive. It's definitely the biggest one I've, I've ever been to and ever covered. My first impression of COP15, my arrival in Copenhagen, is uh, um, the interest, the, the amount of interest. So many people are, were, uh, you know, are around, came for the conference. There's so much um, concern about the environment this time around. Uh, there's so much, so much interest. The, the media is awash with, with uh, issues on climate change. But it's, it's, been, it's been overwhelming. There's so many people here. So many. The attendance is, is massive. Uh, I thought this would be really, um, uh, it would be crazy. Um, because it's, a, it's such a huge venue and the expectations are so um, high for the outcome. So I expected it to be really crazy. It's not such a simple coverage for a, a journalist. Some of the um, difficulties we faced as a developing country, as a journalist from a developing country, covering the environment has been the interest of the people and as well as our uh, organizations, our employers. The, the interest is rather low. I have trouble um, having my editor appreciate what uh, what I'm getting at with my stories that I get here because it's not always um, it doesn't always have an appeal to the local audience. I have to like chew down the science into something that they can understand. Uh, financial constraints goes a long way in um, you know uh, affecting the development of uh, environmental journalists in developing countries because the uh, as I said earlier, the employers are not so keen about issues on environment. We may, may or may not be able to go here to participate in here or even just see this because we don't have we don't necessarily have the money to do so. And even if we do have the money to do so, some of my colleagues have been having problems, for example, like finding hotels at such an expensive city like Copenhagen. I do think financial constraints um, uh, prohibit journalists from, from developing countries to to do um, to report uh, well on the conference because our budgets are smaller um, and we yeah we really have to think about how we allocate money even for simple things like phone calls or, or setting up interviews and stuff like that. It's not easy to uh, get access to all the delegations and uh, all the people who you want to speak to, but uh, it is uh, it actually I mean boils down to your uh, efforts, how much efforts you make and how much hard work you do uh, to get these things done. To, you can get access to any person, but it always depends off, upon your hard work. Access to, to African delegates is, is generally easy on a personal level. They're very accessible. They're just not always available because the delegations are small and they have to attend so many meetings. Um, they also have to do their informal lobbying. So although they're very friendly people and they're, they're very available on a personal level, and they really do try to make time for the press, it's, uh, it, it remains tough.